Hi everyone, my name is Tiana and today I will be doing my book critique on Genders in Production by Leslie Sousinger. Um, I'm going to do my best to explain everything as simple as possible and then bring in a little bit of what um, our classmates haven't already covered for this book. Um, and then I also have my notes up here, so if I'm not looking into the camera, that's what I'm doing. Um, so, Salzinger's book was entirely research-based, and she does her study on genders in production over the course of a couple years in the early 90s. Her analysis was done on women workers in four um, factories in northern Mexico. She looks at existing secondary data and studies on the maquilas and um, factories outside of Mexico. She analyzes media reports. Um, she did interviews with managers, with workers. Um, she even did her own observations by um, working in the factories and working on the shop floor and seeing how the process worked. Um, and then so she specifically wanted to look at how gender played its part in transnational production. Um, so what Salzinger learned was that, you know, we're a capitalist society. Um, corporations will always try to find a way to minimize um, costs and maximize profits. And so here we see um, U.S. corporations are outsourcing their production to places that have cheap labor like Asia and Mexico. And then what we then see um, is that companies discover what the perfect worker should look like. Um, so women were seen as being docile and dexterous. Um, and femininity was linked to being productive, whereas the men were seen as being lazy and destructive. Um, a huge part of that was also female subordination. Um, with traditional gender roles, women were expected or seen as subservient to their husbands and to their families. And so the factories thought they could bring that into their factory and, you know, use that on the shop floor. Um, there was an expectation of how women should be as workers. Um, there was an expectation of their image, and Salzinger even said it was very sexualized. Um, the book also goes into detail about how they specifically want to hire women, and so they would even try to get women from rural areas to get, go and work there, just simply for the fact because they wanted women. Um, so in this case, we see um, an example of sex segregation. That's what we were reading about last week. Um, I see three different um, of those hi three different hypotheses being applied. We see the socialization hypothesis um, because working in maquilas was seen as a job for women only, not for men. We also see the employer selection hypothesis because they only wanted women. And then we see the desertion hypothesis because the men were way outnumbered. And then the ones that were there were just completely invisible to the managers. Um, Salzinger also takes a look at related studies on factories and uses her own participant observation to formulate her arguments. Um, so the early theories on genders and production um, what they did was assume gender meanings and gender and said that it's fixed and it's rigid and it did not look at global production and so the problem with that is uh, you just can't link femininity with productivity and then Salzinger also argues that the self is always under reconstruction. A second theory that we see is called Taylorism, where they say that you could basically made your, uh, made, you could mold your worker, sorry, into being docile and to do what you need just by talking to them through communication and intense supervision. Um, however, they formulated this theory by only looking at one factory, one gender, and one ethnicity. And so Salzinger says that, you know, it can be applied to everybody. And um, she also sees it as exploitation. Um, so what started with the rise of pro productive femininity in the maquilas also later caused problems. Um, looking at how women were working in factories and then they were the main source of income for the families, we can see the effects of it. Um, we start to see men take a hit on their machismo. Machismo, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. Um, it was explained on page 47 of the book. Um, so men lost their value as the head of the household. Salzinger observed a change in gender roles and family structure. Um, 
there also um, began discrimination against women. Um, so people were claiming that women had forgotten how to make their beds. They didn't know how to make homemade mole anymore. anymore. Um, the media just made them look bad. Um, they said they didn't want to take jobs as maids. Um, they were joining gangs. They were being dangerous and aggressive. They were drinking, practicing free love, having kids out of wedlock, um, getting divorces. Um, so we were just seeing that the media was tearing women apart and making them look bad. Um, and then it just reminds me of Misrepresentation, the documentary you watched uh, towards the beginning of the term. Um, so we see that we learned that women are defined by their gender. And before we do anything, our gender and behaviors expected are associated with the gender. Like, that's what comes first. And so by these women gaining any sort of independence, it was cast in a bad light because they weren't doing the societal expectations of how women are supposed to act. And so it even got to a point where women were being offered self-improvement courses um, in order to save their morale and you know moral and human values um another observation i made based off of that same documentary was how women are objectified in literally doing anything they do um in this case these women who are supposed to be factory workers making products they were still sexualized by their managers they were expected to wear red lipstick and dress a certain way and be flirty and all of that um also another key piece of this book talks about um, how this sort of newfound independence along with um, the downturn of the U.S. economy caused problems for the factories. Um, many maquilas had to lay workers off and give them time off. And some of the women also began moving to better paying factories. Um, there were strikes organized and um, how organizations like Como and Croc uh, also helped them fight for working women's rights. So... I think that was a very important piece of the book. Overall, um, this book did a good job of discussing um, transnational production and how it was built on the assumption of the docility of the third world woman worker. Um, I do appreciate that Salzinger was thorough with her research and she covered all her bases. Um, I do think, I mean, in my opinion, I wish she would have like looked more into the individual women and looked at their stories just so that we could kind of put a face, you know, to the Makila workers and all of that. Um, however, Salzinger did give us an insight to global production and she made a huge contribution to gender studies. Yeah, so that's all I have. Thank you for listening.